Okay, so no power is coming out of your generator. And I took the cover off of it. Now, this is a brushless generator. So usually if there were brushes, they'd be somewhere around here. And it's just a completely separate type of system. You, there's only really a one good way of checking this. So we're going to check the condition of the generator head itself. And what we're going to do is, right now I'm hoping that the reason why this generator doesn't have any output is this capacitor. Now, if it is, we're going to take a look at it and we'll discuss how to do this. But for the time being, we're just going to leave it in place. There's two cables. This part shouldn't be necessary, um, but I'm just going to mark that one. Now, sometimes there could be four, uh, if it's a rather large generator, or there, you know, this is just a very simple 2500 watt. So, right now, we have the two wires out, and what I need to do is we're going to take a multimeter and we're going to turn a generator on and we're going to see what we get. Here's a side note. If you're like me and can't find your other clips, or not clips, like the little push connectors, uh, I just took some just generic wire connections, I forget what they were called. Just took off the plastic and just going to insert them in there and we'll connect to that and connect To that and it's not like we're going to be doing we're not going to be running across the room with it it is spinning at 3600 3700 rpm so we're going to want to not do anything too drastic we're going to want to keep it at the minimum but on my multimeter let's take a look i hope the light isn't drowning us out but what we are going to want is volts AC. That's usually uh, like a V with a squiggly mark. Um, mine says AC on there, so it's pretty good. Some of them will just be automatic. Those are pretty easy. So we want to do volts AC. Now what we're checking right now is this. I've seen a range in a, from what I've researched. It can range anywhere between you want around 5, but it can be as low as 3 and as high as 7. So I'm going to say anywhere in between 3 to 7 volts, ideally 5, is where we're going to want to be. And this shouldn't take very long to do. So I'm going to put this on the ground and turn it on for 10 seconds, and we will check and see. If we do not get anything, it means the head of the generator, something's wrong, and it's dead. If we do get voltage, all we have to do is what I'm hoping we have to do and check um, or replace the capacitor. There is a slight possibility that it could just be the switch. That's a different video on that one. I checked the switch. The switch seems or the socket seems fine. It doesn't appear to be a break anywhere. The wires are all connected. So we don't have to worry about that. So we're going to look at this multimeter and see what it reads. Okay, everyone. Hold on. Uh, let's see, we're on and choke. I'm just gonna pull it real quick and make sure there's nothing. Obviously, you can't get caught, and then it doesn't. Just very good. Okay. Hopefully you were able to see that, but that was reading 10. That's a pretty, that's, that's fairly high, but I also think the engine is revving pretty high too. So I'm pretty sure we have a good head 
we need to continue on to the next step and look at this capacitor. So now that we're at that point, we no longer need our multimeter, so I'll just take this out, take that out, turn that off, and we're good. There shouldn't be anything else holding this in. Besides these zip ties. Now we're going to want to take a towel and just kind of clean this off. Oh, it's even cracked. I've seen it happen a lot when engines will, the throttle will get stuck open and the person catches it pretty slowly. I mean, it's not much you can do, but um, it, it will cause the generator to overproduce, let's put it that way, and these will blow. It's kind of like the purpose, but so what we're looking for we need to find one that matches this. Could potentially look that up. Oops, probably can't see that either. But I'm not going to. Uh, the dimensions are fairly important because we want to keep that in mind. But we have a 400V to 450V. This one's also 500. About 125UF. So I'm going to do a quick search on probably Amazon and see what I come up with for those specifications. So I did some research and I mean, I found two or three. Looks like it's going to be about $10. Um, not too concerned over that one at all. But you do want to make sure, like I said, you get one that's the right size. So the one I'm looking for was about three and a half inches long and one and a half inches wide. That's about this. Uh, sometimes it will have multiple pins on here. Don't be alarmed. That's completely fine. Just connect and find one and you should be good. So I'm going to go ahead and get that ordered. But if your generator is not generating electricity, this is probably, and you have a brushless engine, this is probably how or the reason why. This is how you're going to check it. So I'm going to go ahead and get that ordered, and we will uh, see if this runs well after. But this is at least how you check the condition of the head of your generator with a brushless generator. It's been a couple of days, and got the new transistor, um, or excuse me, capacitor. And I have it installed, just connect the wires, I zip tied it in and you know, it's obviously a different color but it's the same size it's the same ratings it's the same just different branding so i'm going to trim that up put the side cover back on real quick and we'll give it a test so we got it all put back together i have a drill that has tape around the trigger so it's always on and i'm just going to run it for a quick second because the door's shut but if we see the drill moving, we're set. If we don't, then, um, well, that's bad news. Okay, so the drill moved, making power now. It was, a, it was a capacitor. That's a pretty common problem on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test out the frequency of it, uh, make sure the engine speed is good and the output is good, and I want to make sure that everything's on the up and up. But yeah, that's how you change out a capacitor on it. So we'll go ahead and um, work on the rest of it. but. You know, that's a pretty common procedure.